Yumi is very clearly not my favorite champion in League of Legends. I've been responsible for more than my share of Yumi's slander, even going as far as getting her name trending when I asked for people to roast her. To put it nicely, if there was a Yumi fan club, I would not be the president. In fact, I wouldn't even be the treasurer or the secretary. I'd be the goblin that hides beneath the stairs that makes people pay a toll in order to progress. But recently, I woke up in a cold sweat in the middle of the night and asked myself why. Why did I hate Yumi so much? I mean, sure, there are basic answers, like how she's a low-skill, high-reward champion that just gets rewarded for being in the same game as someone good, or how the Riot dev team has the audacity to say that she had the same skill ceiling as characters like Akali and Kiana, or even the fact that she says, where's my fishy fishy fish for my dishy dishy dish. Oh, that still sends shudders down my spine. No, no, all of these answers seemed a bit too shallow for my blood. Everyone can say that a champion is easy, but if you can't prove it, then it's basically just locker room talk. But would performing well on Yumi actually prove that she's an easy champion? In this case, no, because as we all know, I'm a god gamer. Do -dee -do -dee -do. Boop, beep, boop, beep, boop. On top of that, as we know, every single player is different. And just because I can perform well on her with relative ease doesn't mean that everyone else can in the grand scheme of things. But what if there was a way to measure something that was more common? A measurement that we've actually been using since the Stone Age of StarCraft. What measurement is that, you asked? Well, if you guessed APM, you are correct. For those of you who don't know, APM stands for actions per minute. Every single button you press, every time you click, every skill you use counts as an action. The reason why I went with this measurement in particular instead of total actions is because total actions would change based on the length of the game. Win rate and KDA are heavily reliant on whether or not Riot decides to hate you that day. And finally, damage dealt, healing done, and all other in-game stats can go fuck themselves. So now that we've gotten all of those out of the way, all that is left is APM. How many buttons does a Yumi have to press to be successful? Well, obviously this number is not going to mean anything to us if we don't find a normal champion to reference. So we started off with a naturally high APM champion to get our basis. I am talking about the ability spamming, perma healing, AoE burst dealing AP Rangar. After a relatively successful, albeit troll game, I don't know what I'm looking at here either, guys. I don't know what I'm looking at either, guys. I'm going to be honest with you, chat. I don't know what I'm looking at either. I don't know what that was. We managed to squeak out a victory with an average 204 APM in an 18 minute game. As you can imagine, a lot of those actions come from movement, spamming our abilities, and of course, screaming at someone so loud that they cease to exist. To drive the point home a little bit further, I chose another relatively skill spamming champion to check their APM as well. And after a pretty solid Garen jungle game, we ended up with a 201 APM across 30 seven minutes, which puts both of these relatively different characters at the same level of effort it takes to play. So now that we have that established, it's finally time to see how Yumi compares. After a relatively rough bot lane playing against a Zerith and Senna combo, I almost felt guilty for not paying top dollar to see this Caitlyn getting gangbanged. <laughs> That's kind of gross. However, after a pretty rough early game, I managed to find salvation in the form of Nicky Boy as Kog'Ma mid. And piggybacking off of his greatness, we managed to barely pull out a harrowing victory that lasted almost an entire 40 minutes. And in that game, after a Mikhail's, using my passive as frequently as I can, jumping around different allies in team fights, spamming my Q as much as physically possible, and using both of my summoner spells, we finally got our base Yumi APM. 
clocking in at a low, low 60 actions per minute. Which may sound like a lot, but comparatively means that I only had to press a little bit more than one fourth of the buttons that a normal champion did. And for a variety of reasons. The simplest being that for the majority of the early game, Yumi doesn't have to move for herself, saving her a lot of thinking and clicking. Furthermore, since she only dismounts when it's safe to proc her passive in necessary circumstances, Yumi's W isn't really spammed. And lastly, since Yumi's E takes 15% of her max mana, spamming this ability too much can consume all of her mana, rendering her completely useless. Giving her only one ability to spam for the majority of the early game, as seen in our graph here. Which means that physically speaking, Yumi has to do less than all other champions all of the time. But what if we went deeper? What if, for the low cost of our sanity, we saw how deep the rabbit hole goes and did our best to see how low we can get Yumi's APM in a successful game? At a base level, this sounds like a pretty simple challenge. Just press less buttons. Duh. Hell, even I thought it was going to be easy. It wasn't. And I quickly learned in our first attempt that this was going to be a very, very uphill battle. After what can only be described as being cyberbullied by an enemy Graves in Zareth bot lane, our first attempt wasn't going well at all. But fortunately, we had an ace up our sleeve in the form of our resident Shen main, Okanya. So no matter what happened in the game, the second we got too deep into trouble, luckily we could have Shen there in a jiffy to give us an upper hand, and oh my god, he laned against a Silas. Which means that Silas can do exactly what Shen did, but better. As much as I would like to say that this game was winnable, it was simply a team diff. However, it did not go without its merit. I learned a lot in this absolutely one-sided bloodbath. Every single click mattered in this challenge. Pressing tab to check the scoreboard, buying your items in separate parts. Hell, even deciding to left click in order to upgrade my spells so that I didn't have to press control and another button and sacrifice an action. All of it could have a serious impact on APM. In fact, it even got to a point where I wouldn't even throw out my Q if I thought it was gonna miss because missing one of these can impact the APM, but I needed them to land in order to finish my support item. However, even on our first attempt of trying the APM challenge, we managed to get our APM down to a measly 28, which completely halves our last result, but it didn't really count because we lost. And though we lost in a completely devastating fashion, I did feel my brain fold. Not only learning how to better min-max my actions on Yumi, but also coming to the realization that this was a huge mistake and it was going to take me a lot longer than expected. We rolled the dice and we tried the challenge again, with the same gusto, but just a lot, lot sadder. And unfortunately, we fell victim to Riot's god-awful matchmaking system, where our team had three silver accounts, an unranked account, and a plat 2 account, the enemy team had a Diamond 2 player, a Diamond 2 player, a very obviously high Diamond Smurf, a Diamond 1 player, and a fucking Masters player. And at this point, I almost quit. I sat there and I wondered if it was even worth it. And as I sat there and almost quit, I remembered who I was doing it for. I was honestly doing it for the majority of the viewers watching this that aren't subscribed to the channel. <laughs> Uh, you got, what the f- yo, what'd you think? We spend a lot of effort on this channel, doing everything we can to make nothing but bangers for you guys to enjoy. And honestly, I think that you would have a wonderful time subscribing, so if you haven't yet, please do. And also, ring the bell so that you don't miss one of the bangers that we put out there. Anyways, let's keep going. Sadly, the next game, we got absolutely destroyed as well because me and Nikki Boy tried doing Mundo Yumi Bot and unfortunately got paired up against a Kalista who is the only ADC that Mundo cannot run down. Admittingly, this game stung, but not as much as the next game where the same Kalista that just ran us down insta-locked Kalista on our side this time and went a staggering 1-8 top lane. Which wasn't even the worst part of that game because our Malzahar mid lost to a Talon that kept BMing him, so he started running it down and yelling at us. 
League of Legends never change. However, even though these games were very unfortunate, we did manage to get our APM down to 24, which is better, but nowhere near as low as I wanted. At this point, the misery was worn on my face. I felt tired, I was broken, I smelled terrible, but I knew that this had to be done. I sadly queued up for the next game, but this time we had a Jin ADC, which opened up an entirely new avenue for low APM. You see, Jin is a very good character for this exact purpose. Number one, he's relatively safe at this stage of the game due to his sheer range and speed up on his passive. Number two, since he gets so much AD innately, for this challenge specifically, you can level up Yumi's W to maximize his AD while lowering your APM. And number three, Yumi's Q is a very easy way for Jin to capitalize and get a kill, basically making this the perfect storm to lower your APM. On top of that, my very good friend Frost Prime was playing Zillion mid to fill in as a second support and save the people that I couldn't. Paired with Okanya on Shen in the top lane yet again, no matter what happened, there was plenty of shields, heals, and resurrections to keep our team strong and safe. We destroyed bot lane. We won almost every single team fight. Hell, we played so damn well that I didn't even die once. But was it enough? I mean, sure, we ended up winning, and by dominating fashion, but let's not forget about our actual goal. Did we lower our APM? Well, I will let the footage speak for itself. Please, God, let me check. Please! Please, God, the big unveil! Yes! 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 Our APM was seven! We got what seven APM! Fuck yeah, dude! I knew we could get sub 10. 7 APM, bro. In a 29 minute, it wasn't even a sort a short FF game. It was a 29 minute game with a 7 APM. Let's fucking go, guys. Good job. Oh, I'm so happy. Oh my god, that means I never have to play Yumi again. Oh, oh. Christ. Good shit, what guys. The fuck? Thank you guys. Thank you for the help, man. That was fucking miserable. <laughs> Thank you, Frost, for choosing a support so I didn't have to be one. <laughs> Can I plug my OnlyFans? Yeah, dude, plug your OnlyFans. No, wait, <laughs> wait. Not on stream, isn't that bannable? <laughs> ah! We got down to seven actions per minute. That is one button pressed every 8.5 seconds, pressing 28.5 times less than the normal champions in the game. And we did it going two, zero, and eight. What does this prove? Well, a lot, actually. Yes, Yumi is an easier champion to play than other champions in League of Legends. Even in a game where I wasn't focusing on this challenge and just tried to play well, Yumi still took a little over one fourth of the horsepower that other champions did. However, what does 7 APM mean? Is it realistic? Definitely not. It just happened to be the perfect storm to succeed in this challenge that we set. But realistically speaking, if a Yumi lands every Q, only heals when absolutely necessary, and just sticks to a hyper carry, I do believe her APM can hit sub 20 consistently. It was so fucking hard to get this challenge done, and one of the things that excited me the most of winning was the fact that I don't have to play any more Yumi. Unless there's something else. But honestly, I had an absolute blast doing this challenge for the sake of proving a very dumb point. That Yumi, though shockingly not as brain dead as I thought, literally takes less work to play than everybody else. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video. It was so hard to get done, but I had a lot of fun doing it. We're trying a new format of content on the channel, uh, but if you guys want to see these streams happen live, because they do happen live, this one in particular was five hours straight of Yumi gameplay. If you guys want to check out the streams live, twitch.tv slash scooch live, and we're also going to start using a second channel for stream highlights specifically that are just gameplay oriented and focusing on just putting all the crazy bangers on this 
this channel. Regardless, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I want to give a huge shout out to Nikki Boy for playing with me and doing all these crazy things with me. Uh, Serenide, aka my girlfriend, for also suffering with me and going against a Diamond 2 and Diamond 1 bot lane and getting just absolutely stomped out. Okanya for always being Big Daddy Shen and keeping us alive. Frost Prime, of course, for being the zillion that could fill in in the spots that I couldn't. And of course, Zeus, thank you for editing this video. You're a fantastic editor and you're wildly consistent. That's all I gotta say. Click the videos that are on the screen because I know you guys are gonna have a wonderful time going there. And subscribe if you haven't because we're gonna continue to make more bangers like this. Guys, we're barely getting started. And, and we're, 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 what, what, we're going, we're, we're at the tippity, we're at the tippy top of the mountain and we're only halfway up. That's the saying. That's the, that's what he says. Goodbye.